physically isolated, but I'm still connected. So I, I, it looked like a maybe a, a Greek name or something. Um, I just thought that was brilliant. Uh, we can still learn at a distance, but when we do that, we have to remember that we still need to be social. So when we look at what drives learning down here, this is our goal. Um, we need students to act in certain ways and to demonstrate certain behavior to learn. But that behavior is also driven through emotion. So learning is social. And if learning is isolating, then students aren't going to learn as much. So I saw some of you were from Italy. This is a man in Rome. Um, he created some technology to um, to go out and about into the market while still practicing social distancing. So this would be the distance of security for the coronavirus. Oh yes. What a beautiful thing. I'm going to be able to do it. Very creative. I, I agree with Paula, who said, funny man, very creative. Uh, extremely creative, innovative, even. He was using technology to be social, to go out and still protect himself. However, most of us are not going to put on some suspenders and an enormous disc around our waist, right? But we can still practice social distancing while being uh, social. So most of us are on computers right now. Uh, I see this as a very social group. We can also provide students with a social learning environment even when we're isolated physically. <laughs> I see one person wants that uh, disc. That's great. What? <laughs> excuse me. Um, one thing that, that's really important is when you receive emails to respond promptly. So have set times during the day where you will respond so students aren't waiting long periods of time to get responses because that will really make them feel isolated if they don't feel like you're there and they will interpret that as you not caring about them. The other thing that we need to do is remember to bring our social skills. So rather than sending an email to a student saying, hey, you missed this assignment that was due last week, please do it. You should say, hello, I hope you're having a nice day. Um, I, I notice that you're missing something. Is, is there something I can do to help? I'm here, just let me know. So being, being social in our communications is really important. Having greetings, you know, salutations, and kind of encouraging students, we need to remember to do that. I was interviewing one online uh, student and, and he said, you know, I talk to my teacher, but it feels like I'm talking to a robot. So, so, you know, the teacher was responding, but it felt like a robot. We know that we're not robots, but sometimes we can communicate in a robotic way. One way to let our students know that we are human, uh, that we are not ro robots, is to show yourself. So if you're doing a webinar, make sure that you add a profile image and encourage students to do the same thing, or you'll be in an environment like this where everyone has those blank profile, those generic profile images. So it's important that you do it, but also encourage your students to do it. Uh, Teresa Wills at, at George Mason University actually encouraged me to do something that I hadn't thought of before. She said, you should change your profile picture regularly during the course. So I thought, you know, normally when I do um, my courses, that's the profile image I use. I'm in a tie, uh, I'm trying to be professional. But then I went on my social media and I have more fun images like me on a hike with my wife, um, I love Elf, the movie, the Christmas movie. So I changed that to my profile picture or me on a hike with my daughter. So you can, you can really change up your profile picture during the course, just like you would on Facebook or Twitter or, or something like that. The other thing that we hear a lot <laughs> is if you're making a video recording, or you're in a live video session. Teachers get really nervous about being perfect. Uh, so if you're recording a video, uh, teachers will, will record the video, watch it, and then they say, ah, oh, you know, I coughed in the middle of that. I have to re-record. Or I was saying, hmm, too much. Why do I do that? I'm gonna re-record. And one thing that uh, we learn from students is they don't want you to re-record. 
if, if the video is perfect or it feels like you're reading something, it doesn't feel authentic and they're not as engaged. So I created a meme to help us remember this. Like, oh no, I'm not perfect. My wife told me not to include that and I told her that was gonna be funny. And so um, I hope you guys like that too because I like to be right. <laughs> Um, the other thing that we can do is use uh, video tools, video communication tools. These tools like Flipgrid allow you to record a message for students to watch at any time. And in, sometimes, uh, in some cases, students can post videos as well. So here's a teacher. She was here this morning, actually, but I don't think she's here now. Chrissy is going to make some videos, and I want you to pay attention to, to how authentic she is. Please say hi. Hi, Boris. Meet my puppy Ludo, guys. I am here to tell you that the word F-I-N-I-T-E is not finite. <laughs> it's finite. So I know that we might think it's finite because we say infinite when we mean an amount that is never ending. But finite is how you say it, and that means that there is a fixed amount of something. So I just wanted to get on here and let you know the proper way to say it. You guys are doing an awesome job, and I love listening to all of your math vocabulary videos. Keep it up. Thanks. All right, guys, I'm at Wegmans, and I found this cereal, Frosted Mini Wheats. It's $2.50, and it's for 18 ounces. So the unit rate, if I take two fifty dollars and I divide it by 18, it comes out to around $0.14. Cents. But then there's this one, and it's $3.29, and it's 36 ounces. So if I were to calculate that, that comes to nine, about nine cents. So clearly, even though this one is on sale, it is still a better um, deal to get this one because the unit rate is a lot better. Oh, morning. So I found some more unit rate guys. Isn't that cool? If you go to the deli, you can see how much everything costs per pound. So if you buy some deli meat, which I think we did, do we have some in the cart? So you can see we bought some, I know it's backwards, but it, the total cost was $4.43, but we only got a uh, half a pound, 0.51 pounds. So the, you use deli, in the deli area, you use um, unit rate all the time. Don't you love Chrissy? I mean, watch, watching that video, I know some of you couldn't hear it. There is a link there, there above. Think of everything we learned. We met her dog. We know what breakfast cereal she likes to buy. Uh, her husband made a cameo and she's real. She's a real person. No one's gonna call Chrissy a robot. Um, and I loved when she was actually on her phone making the recording. Uh, she didn't realize it was recording and she's like, oh, hello, good morning. And then just started going. She could have easily said, oh, that was a mistake. I'm gonna re-record. Don't do that. Be real. Don't, uh, don't be a robot. This was a study, I've actually done several research articles on video communication, and I love this screenshot. We, we looked at lo like lots and lots of hours of video, and this was one of my favorites. Um, this was a, a teacher. You can see that it's not very well lit, but uh, he's, he's talking to the students saying, hey, you did a fantastic job. You, you really did this really well. And then his wife heard that and thought, yeah, he did do a good job thumbs up and just kind of put a thumbs up there. So uh, oft oftentimes you might see that and like, oh, you ruined my video. How can you do that? But actually we talked to that student and the student really liked it. She thought it was funny. Uh, it developed a sense of community. It was, it was a social event. We are all tr working from home now, or most of us are working from home now. Uh, some of us don't have an office. Right, so we have to be really creative. There was an article um, that I, I really loved uh, and it had different office spaces, quote unquote office spaces. So here's an ironing board. This was one of my favorites where uh, she was giving a keynote at a conference that was canceled. And so she took a ladder, put her laptop on the ladder and then delivered it as if she were, were standing on stage in front of a thousand people when actually uh, it was just her and her son. And during the presentation, her son said, Mama, don't step on my Legos. 
mama. So you can imagine how embarrassing that would have been. Uh, but I can, I can almost guarantee that people at that webinar thought that that was kind of humanizing, right? So here's another example where here's uh, another teacher. You can see a very professional workspace had a, a something that she could write on in the background, um, probably presented herself very professionally, but look down here, she also has a four month old daughter. And that four month old doesn't know when she's in a really important phone call. That four year old is gonna cry when she wants to cry. And that's okay. We don't have to be perfect. Uh, we need to embrace that. We're all in the same situation. We don't wanna encourage disruptions, but at the same time when they occur, take it as an opportunity to form relationships, to, to present yourself as a parent or as a human. This is my favorite example. Maybe you have seen this on BBC. Um, there, there was a father giving an interview. So let's see what happens in this interview. This is on uh, live television. Scandals happen all the time. The question is how do democracies respond to those scandals? Uh, and what will it mean for, uh, for the wider region? I think one of your children has just walked in. I mean, shift, shifting, shifting sands in the region. Do you think relations with the North may change? Um, I would be surprised if they do. The, um, pardon me. Pardon me. My apologies. What is this going to be for the region? My apologies. North, uh, sorry. Um, North Korea, North, uh, South Korea's policy choices on North Korea have been severely limited in the last six months to a year because. <laughs> that video kills me. It totally kills me, especially the mom at the end diving into the room and capturing the, the kids. Um, what's interesting, that is the most viewed video on BBC News YouTube channel, by far. It's not even close. And in the top 10 is a follow-up interview with the family because so many people were interested in them. And there were memes, there was all sorts of parody videos on this. They became absolute celebrities total celebrities. And I want to be that girl being able to strut into a room with all that confidence. Um, so, and I've seen him in interviews since, and, and I know who he is. I, I feel like I know his family. So one thing to, to keep in mind when we're teaching is make it fun, be playful, uh, use humor. So I've been trying to do that here with, uh, some, some video clips or the meme. <laughs> you can do similar things while you're teaching as well. Make it fun. Okay, so uh, we have two more polls here. Uh, one thing I, I want to know is, do you enjoy to get, do you enjoy getting to know your students online? And do you feel like you're successful at that? So their interests, their background, their experiences. Some of you might find it difficult to do that and when you're not physically together. So I can see some of you are strongly disagreeing or disagree, but we have most in agree or, or strongly agree. So it is possible to do that. Um, now here's the next one. This one is a little different. Uh, it is, do you feel comfortable sharing things about yourself to, to students, your interests, your background? Is there a difference there? I think we can agree that teachers like to get to know their students. But sometimes it's harder as a teacher to share about yourself, even though you enjoy learning about other people. Um, and I can see that here instead of as many strongly agrees, we have fewer and that's okay. Um, but I would just encourage you to do it. Uh, just be human, uh, let your students get to know you just like you wanna get to know them. And this is a great opportunity to do that. This is a, a coming back to Teresa Wills, what she, do, she does, live video calls with her students or webinars. And she starts every webinar with a blank slide. And then she allows her students to write their successes, their celebrations on that slide. So, so try something like that. Just make time for, for students to be a little social and for, for them to share things about what's going on in their lives. Okay, I'm back now. So, Tip number eight is start with what you have. 
So many of us, we are not working in our classrooms anymore, our physical classrooms, we're in our virtual classrooms, and we're physically at home. So sometimes we feel like we don't have the resources we need, or perhaps we don't have all of the books that we want to use. Well, you should think about it a different way. You're in your home, you can't leave, what are the things that you have here that you can use to teach English? So, perhaps you can think about food, clothes, toys, tools, things in your kitchen, plates, cups, utensils. Maybe you have a lot of pictures and photos around your house. Perhaps you have lots of books and magazines. Maybe even recyclable material, newspapers, oh, empty bottles and cans. Think about what you do have. Start with that and you can do a little activity that I'm calling a treasure hunt. So you have to think about all of these treasures that you have in your house. So of course step one is to look at your lesson content and your objectives. Step two would be go room to room in your home and look for objects to support your lesson. And don't forget closets. And then step three, collect objects to use for your next lesson. So you can see some pictures. I took my laundry basket and I just went from room to room filling it up. So for example, I found uh, this oldie but goodie on the bookshelf, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see? So I grabbed that. Perhaps you're teaching adults. You're teaching university students and they're learning about how to do a professional interview. Then maybe you could go get clothing for an interview. There you can see me in my husband's closet grabbing a suit and shirt and tie. And anything that you can use to make your lesson come alive. Maybe you have a unit on toys or animals. So. What's a great place to look? Look in your kids' bedrooms. Here I am, and I'm in my daughter's bedroom, and actually I was really excited because I found this while so I was trying to find all of the animals, and I was very excited because I ended up finding a red bird that I could use with this lesson. So take a look. Find all of those treasures. Uh, as you're walking around the house, you might find random items you forgot about. I was thinking about animals and I realized, ah, I forgot about this camel from Livia. Put it in the basket. Of course, the kitchen has lots of things so that you can teach all about food. So when you're teaching about fruits, use a bowl of fruit and show it. Of course, you should always remember that your students are at home too. So they can use what they have. So you might even think of doing a show and tell and asking them to show you something and tell you about it. Let's take a look at a video. And this is my daughter, Ilsa. Let's take a look. Okay, now go to your... room, go grab your favorite toy. All right, now tell us a little bit about your toy. Hi, I'm Elsa. And I have Snowy Bell, my, my barn owl, my favorite All right. Let me tell you so a you can ask students to go get their favorite uh, toy, to the show and tell. They if you have older learners, you could ask them to share something that is meaningful to them and tell you about it. Maybe you are teaching about colors. You could say, okay, everyone go grab one thing blue. And then they bring it back and show you. Maybe you're teaching about fruits and vegetables. You could say, okay, go to your kitchen, grab one fruit, one vegetable, and you can check your comprehension to see if they understood the vocabulary. So remember, 
start with what you have, but also start with what your students have. Okay, now you could also even, perhaps if you have a unit on pets, go grab one of your pets. I saw people talking about their dogs barking. Well, my my corgi Penelope didn't exactly fit into my laundry basket and maybe it's not so easy to use them for a lesson, but of course you could use photos of them. Photos are a great option for teaching. So imagine all the photos you have on your phone. I'm going to show you a story that I created that uses all photos I found on my phone. So here we go. Okay, this is the story of Sherlock. Once upon a time, there was a puppy named Sherlock. His mommy loved him very much. They worked together, they played together. Then, one day, his mommy got married. Now he was part of a family. The children loved him, and he loved the children. But one day, the family adopted another puppy. Her name was Penelope. Sherlock was not very excited about this new puppy. Penelope loved Sherlock, but Sherlock did not like the new puppy. She kept following him around. She took up all his space. <sighs> then, one day, Penelope wanted to play. Sherlock got angry. They fought and fought until Sherlock realized this was fun. And now they are best friends. And that is the story of Sherlock and Penelope. How did you like my story? Okay, so it's a story where I used all the photos that I found on my phone. I put it together and it's a true story. So now you know a little bit about me and my family. Okay, I'm going to pass it off to Jared now. So Joan showed me that story and I loved it. And I thought, how can students do something similar so they can share about themselves or that you could do as well? Um, one thing that you can do is use a PowerPoint slides or a presentation tool. And if you're using PowerPoint, you can actually record audio. Um, right there, there's an option to record audio. There are also uh, tools that allow you to record what's on your screen. So like Screencast-O-Matic or Loom. Loom, I just learned, has a free account now that's really robust. Uh, I think I might start using that more now. I was also thinking instead of PowerPoint, you could just have students draw something or you could just draw something and then use your phone to record it. Something really simple like that. So I actually had my daughter do this. Um, you see her right there and I had her write out a story about when we went to the beach. You can see that is how she writes several, which I thought was really cool, but it helped me see, oh, that's creative spelling. But then I taught her how to spell several. Um, and then she drew a picture. So then she held up her picture and read it while I recorded it. And then I sent it away. The, the thing that I really loved about that is she was excited about it. You can see that she, she picked out her outfit and, and put a bow in her hair and everything because she had an audience. We were sending it to grandma. So students can get excited about that. The other thing you can do is you can just audio record it. Uh, and, and students can practice that way and you can kind of assess their, their reading fluency. Um, so here we have Vocaroo. And what's nice about Vocaroo is it's a website you can go to there. But once you record, it gives you a link that students can send directly to you. 
Um, so it's one way to kind of have a, a fun assessment um, in your online courses. The other thing, just like Joan walked around with a basket around the home, you can uh, look what you have available to you online. What's really interesting now is a lot of these tech companies are offering their uh, premium versions, their paid versions for free because of the COVID-19 crisis. So here is a link that you can go to. Um, we can put it in the chat box as well, but it just has hundreds of tools on there with links and short descriptions. It might feel a little overwhelming, but it, it can be a good place to start and just search. Uh, you might be surprised at what you find. Hi again. So tip number nine is called be aware while you're there. And what we mean by that is when you're here on the screen, right? Try to be aware of what you're doing in this little square here. And also, I want you to imagine what your students are seeing and even doing, right? What's happening behind this flat screen? Here in this picture, I just took this a couple days ago. These are my two kids, Ilse and Finn, and they are studying. They're actually doing a math lesson with a teacher online, and he's there. You can see the iPad, perhaps, um, which is right here. So the teacher's here, and here's Ilse and Finn. Of course, Sherlock and Penelope are there, too. Okay. But what you can imagine is that your students have all this around them, okay? And it's your job to make whatever you're doing on this little screen, whether it's a tablet, maybe even a phone, maybe it's a laptop, what are you going to do to make it interesting and engaging for them? They might have distractions around them. And also you're competing with what they normally watch on these devices, which might be videos and think TV shows, cartoons, uh, maybe even playing computer games. So think about what your students are seeing on their screen. So try to uh, be aware of what do you look like? What are the expressions on your face? What are the gestures you're using? What's in the background? What are they seeing? You might see my neighbor's yard. Uh, also, what could you hold up and show? So maybe students aren't understanding you, so you can keep a, a whiteboard nearby if you have it, or just a piece of paper, right, to make sure you can show big and small or whatever it is you're teaching. Um, and perhaps you even have some attention getters or things to make sure they're paying attention. Right? So try to grab their attention. I have a couple here. Uh, let's see, in my box, I always carry my trusty train whistle. Make sure they're paying attention. Okay, so we're trying to be aware while you're right here. Okay, next. Sorry, next, we have a video which is one that Jared has made about how to make a bad video. Let's take a look at that. Recording while backlit. Recording in a dim lit room. Looking down at the webcam. Sitting too far away. Away. Sitting too close to the webcam. Re recording in a loud room. Speaking too softly. Speaking too loud. So I think we've all done those things. Um, I was one of you that couldn't see the video actually either, <laughs> but there is a link uh, that we can put up there if you wanna see how to make a bad webcam video. But we do lots of those things, recording with, um, you see here, this is actually the very first webcam video that I ever did. I found it on my YouTube channel, it was 10 years ago. Um, I didn't take much thought about what I looked like. I had this lamp that I was backlit, 
I'm, I'm looking down at the webcam. Uh, my, my glasses have a lot of glare. Um, the, I, I'm holding the laptop crooked. This is a more recent web, webcam video that I did, and you'll notice I was a little more thoughtful. I saw some of you are from Portugal. Uh, you might recognize uh, these little wooden tops. I lived in Portugal for a couple of years, and so I, I love those things. And when I came home, I, I bought dozens of them to kind of give away, and now I use them as decorations. So I see Anna, yeah, great. So <laughs> um, also I, I place a picture of my family uh, right there. This is what it looked like. This is what the desk looked like. And I actually saw one of you ask, I wonder what Jared's desk looks like right now. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what it looks like right now. My laptop is on a stack of books. Um, there's some disorganization in the room. And this is kind of a storage room that I'm in right now. And I'm gonna tell you a little secret. This plant does not belong there. I put that plant there for you, for your enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> so it made it look like I was in a, a little, like an office, when I'm really in a storage room right now, basically. Thank, thank you. I, I'm glad you enjoy the plant. <laughs> this is another example. Here's another person that had to work in a closet. But notice that they hung a picture behind them uh, before they went on the, on the video call. So just a little bit of preparation can make it fill uh, like like you're actually in an office. This is my favorite. So this is obviously a Harry Potter fan. Um, and this is a librarian. And she actually created a backdrop, uh, which I thought was brilliant. Um, she might not have been teaching about Harry Potter, but it allows her to show her personality to her students. Similar, if you went into a classroom and you saw their bulletin boards or how what they had on their desks, that type of thing. That's how students get to know you in person, and that's how they can get, get to know you online as well. Okay, Joan. Hi there. So, in an effort to be aware while you're there, let's think about some of the things that you might use. For example, let's say you're going to uh, tell a story or read a story to your students. The first thing I'd like you to do is just think about, well, if I were in my face-to-face -face class, what might I use? Maybe you might use uh, a big book. How many of you like to use big books in your classroom? Okay, yes, very big. Or maybe a little book. I have the same one, but it's little. Okay, or maybe you use a slide presentation with the book, or even a video storytelling. So after you think about what are the different things that you can use, then you might want to think about, well, what's the best thing for me to use when I'm here on this screen? Okay, so let's take a look at a big book, okay? Because many of you like to use it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this story is called A Big Lesson for Little Frog. Okay, let me see. All right, okay. Little Frog looks up. He sees monkey in a tree. Okay, so how is this going? Is this going very well? Mm, it's not exactly convenient. Now, if I'm in a classroom, I might use this so that all my learners can see it from all over the room. But you have a little screen here, so maybe you're not going to choose the big book. That's for the classroom. Perhaps you might want to use a small book instead. Okay, so let's try this one. This book is called a big lesson for a little frog. Little frog looks up. He sees monkey in a tree. Monkey says, look at me. I can swing through the trees. Can you swing too? 
Okay, how's this going? Is this better? Okay, so maybe it's better than the big book, but perhaps you want to consider using something else that could be more engaging on the screen. All right, how about a slide presentation? All right, let's go to the next one. All right, little frog looks up. He sees monkey in a tree. Hey, I'm going to use this. He sees monkey high in a tree. Monkey says, look at me. I can swing through the trees. Can you swing too? Little frog says, no, I can't swing through the trees. All right, so how is this going? Do you like this better? Okay, much better. All right, very good. Now, how about if we do a video storytelling? Let's take a look at the video and see how we like it. This story is called A Big Lesson for a Little Frog. Little Frog looks up. He sees monkey in a tree. Monkey says, look at me. I can swing through the trees. Can you swing too? Little frog says, no, I can't swing through the trees. Parrot flies down to the tree. Parrot says, look at me. I can fly from tree to tree. Can you fly too? Little frog says, no, I can't fly. Giraffe reaches up with his long neck and eats leaves high in the tree. Little Frog is sad. Giraffe sees Little Frog and asks, Why are you sad, Little Frog? Little Frog says, Monkey can swing. Parrot can fly. You can eat leaves high in the tree. I am sad because I can't do those things. Giraffe. All right, so I'm going to stop the video here in the interest of time. I think everyone's thinking that the video is great. One thing it doesn't have is the words, so you could do the closed captioning or subtitles. But I want to say that there might be some use for using the slide presentation or even the book. Um, if you have the words here, then if you're teaching reading, then you might want to focus on the words sometimes. And maybe that's easier with the slide presentation or the little book versus the video. It depends on how you're using it. So think about while you're here, what's going to be the most engaging for your learners and for your lesson. All right. Now, if you liked the video storytelling, and perhaps you give the videos for students to be able to watch at home and watch it more than one time before they come to your lesson, then you can do that. Storyline Online is one of my favorite websites because they have all of these wonderful, famous children's books in English, and they have all famous actors um, through the Screen Actors Guild reading the stories. So I highly suggest it. Okay, now, maybe you want to teach some new words like food and you want to use a song. Now, when you're teaching, of course, maybe you want to use the book, the textbook. It, it might have vocabulary to teach for food. That's great. Okay, or maybe you want to use something like picture cards, like you use in class. Okay, so what if we do this? Okay, let's say we're teaching this and I'm going to teach you how to make peanut butter. Okay, so class, first you take some of these. What are these? These are great. Yes. What are these? Peanuts, right. So to make peanut butter, 
first you take the peanuts and you go like this. Crunch them. All right, repeat after me. First you take the peanuts. First you take the peanuts and you crunch them. Okay, then the next step is you need some of these. What are these? Yes, these are grapes. Excellent. So when you make jelly, you take the grapes and you go like this. Do this motion. Mm -hmm. You squish them. Squish them. All right, so the next line is, then you take the grapes, then you take the grapes, and you squish them. Okay, so you could use cards like this, okay, or what about using these slides? Okay, so here are the peanuts, here's the grapes. What comes next? Then you have to take a piece of this. What is this? Okay, bread. Okay, so then you're going to take the bread, okay, and then you're going to spread it. Okay, so repeat after me. Then you take the bread, then you take the bread, and you spread it. Okay, very good. Then you put another piece of bread, and you make a sandwich. And what do you do with the sandwich? Yes, you're going to eat it. Okay, so I could do it this way. Or I could do it another way. So I'm going to take you with me, and I'm going to walk out of my office, okay, and then maybe you can see here, aha, I'm walking through my house. Here's the living room, and now I'm going to take you to the kitchen. Okay, and I've got it all set up here for my lesson. So, here I am in my kitchen. So, instead of using these different things, you can come to your kitchen, right? Be aware while you're there. Also, use a different space. And now I'm going to teach you about it. So, what's the first ingredient for this song? Yes, peanuts. Okay, so first, I'm going to take some of these peanuts in here. Okay, first I'm going to take the peanuts, and what am I going to do with them? I'm going to crunch them. I'm going to use this mallet. I'm going to crunch them. Very good. And that's how I'm going to make, ta-da, peanut butter. Okay. Next, what do I need next? Hmm, grapes. Let me check my refrigerator for some grapes. All right, here we go. Let's see. Uh-huh, I just happen to have some grapes. Okay. And I think I'm just going to grab some of this jelly here as well. All right. So then you take the grapes, and you're going to go like this. Squish them. Squish them. Very good. So then you take the grapes and you squish them. And that's how you make grape jelly. Okay. Then what comes next, everyone? What comes next? Yes, bread. So then you take some bread. And what are we going to do with the bread? What are we going to do with the bread? Aha, I see you've got it. We're going to spread it. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of the peanut butter and I'm going to spread it. Spread it. Uh huh. And then what comes next? I'm going to take a little bit of this jelly. I'm going to put it on top and I'm going to spread it. Spread it. And then I'm going to take both, put it together to make a sandwich. Excellent. And what am I going to do with the sandwich? I'm going to eat it. Okay. So now I'm going to teach you the song. And if you know it, I want you to sing it along with me. 
why don't you try to sing it? You do each line twice. Okay, so I'm going to start and you follow along. Okay, so first you're going to have to do a little dance, so try to stand up. Okay, wave your hands in the air and then put them to the side. Here we go. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. First you take the peanuts and you crunch them. You crunch them. First you take the peanuts and you crunch them. You crunch them. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. Then you take the grapes and you squish them. You squish them. Then you take the grapes and you squish them. You squish them. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. Then you take the bread and you spread it. You spread it. Then you take the bread and you spread it. You spread it. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. Then you take the sandwich and you eat it. You eat it. Then you take the sandwich and you eat it. You eat it. You ate it. So it's in your mouth. That's why you have to sing it that way. Okay, so I'm dedicating that song to my friend Abby Bello, who sent me a video of her kids singing that song. So, did you like the song? Great. Did you like my lesson? All right. So try to think of creative ways to be able to teach the language. So which one do you think would engage your students the most? Pictures in the textbook. Sure, you're going to use them to teach the language. Picture cards. They could be useful. PowerPoint presentation with the pictures could be useful, but maybe using the realia from the food in your kitchen, maybe that is going to be one that students will enjoy the most. What do you think? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so I do want to say that if you use real food from the kitchen, that might engage your young learners the most. And I have one more thing to give to you, and that is, I just made my peanut butter and jelly sandwich into a heart just for you to thank you for joining us. And I hope that you found these tips helpful. Here we go, right? We're being aware while we're here. We are doing what else? We're starting with what we have. And also, we're trying to be human so you can see a little bit about our lives. So those are the tips for today. And I really hope you found them useful. Thanks so much, Joan. OK, are there any questions? Looks like the chat box is moving really quickly. So we can actually just wrap it up here. I do have a few notes to mention as we conclude the session today. First off, thank you to our fantastic presenters. It was a lot of fun. I know I had a great time. I hope you all did too. I hope you took away some practical tips that you can use as you transition to teaching your learners online. Uh, we will, we do have a follow-up session um, next week. It is at the same exact time um, on building a supportive learning environment. And that will be presented by Joan and Jared. It's the third webinar in the series. Um, so that will be at 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time and 5 p.m. at this same time. So we hope we see you back here next week. We'll be sending along the recording from today's session, and we'll also be posting it on our website so you can see it there and send it to your colleagues as well, too. We'll also be including a certificate for joining us here today, and um, we'll be sending along the link to the In Focus blog post that Jer Owen and Jared have put together, which includes several of the videos from today and the links that they went through as well, too. So be on the lookout for that. We'll get that over to you in about three business days or so. Um, if you do have any questions, you can always email us at ngl.webinars at and we can get back to you. 
Uh, we'll also be sending you now to a feedback survey. We'd love to hear what you thought so we can keep bringing you helpful webinars um, for your teaching practice. And then last but not least, we invite you to visit our online professional development resource page. Um, it's something we re recently created to help teachers who are transitioning to teaching virtually. We'll be continuing to add uh, more webinars to help you teach your English language learners of all ages, um, as well as blog posts and other helpful resource links. And I'm going to just put the link in the chat box here. And we're going to, as I mentioned, continue to add more webinars to that site. Great, so thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks so much, Joan and Jared. All right, Thank bye you. everyone. Have a great rest Thank of your you. afternoon, evening, or morning. Bye-bye. <laughs>